I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Caravan and Motorhome Club at Malvern and I'm very pleased to be bringing you the very very first review of the Auto Sleeper Air. Now it's been quite a long time since Auto Sleepers made a camper van like this, traditional pop top side kitchen layout. Their Volkswagen Trooper um, was last listed in our price guides in 2012. And the last time they made a Ford with a pop top, well, that was about 30 years ago with the Ford Frisky. Now, this Air is based on the Transit Custom short wheelbase, so just under five meters long. And with the top down, it's 2.12 meters high. Probably actually the highest point is the awning along the side, which is one of many standard features on this vehicle. Now it's a brand new model, it'll be in production in September and available for the first year exclusively from Marquis Leisure Outlets. This model is actually so new that they haven't announced a price for it yet. But there is a guide figure of 59995 and that includes pretty much everything that you see on this vehicle with the exception of the automatic gearbox and there will be a pack which will be around 1500 pounds probably called an executive pack which will give you some of the toys as well so call it 61 and a half or 63,000 with the automatic gearbox now they all come with metallic paint you can choose from blue red orange or silver. They all come with alloy wheels and they all get Ford's more powerful 170 PS diesel engine. And it's quite a smart looking beast isn't it? Alloy wheels are standard, the flush fit windows, it's very very automotive and the graphics well they've been kept nice and subtle not motorhome style but just give it a hint that it's a camper van. Now, auto sleepers say that they're aiming the air at the top end of the campervan market against OEM models like Ford's own Nugget, the Volkswagen California and the Mercedes Marco Polo. Now, if you're in the, in the market for one of these vehicles, don't forget to watch after this our Nugget video and also, of course, the California Ocean. In the meantime, look at how clean auto sleepers have kept the looks of this vehicle. Where's the fresh water filler? Where's the mains hookup? Well, fresh water filler is just inside the driver's door, down in the step area there. And the mains hookup, well, that's neatly concealed under the vehicle. You can also see the fresh and waste water tanks under there. They're 40 litres each. And while we're talking about what's underneath the vehicle, you also get a 15 litre built-in gas tank, so no fiddling about changing camping gas cylinders. Now with Auto Sleepers being one of the country's leading campervan and motorhome companies, producing something like 800 vehicles a year, well obviously this vehicle is going to have all the right approvals, so it's going to be full European type approval and Auto Sleepers are also going for Ford's own QVM approval. And of course, they've used top quality components. Now that starts with this German SCA rising roof. And I'll show you how that works because now we're on site, we've hooked up, that's the next thing to do. Now with the SCA roof, everything is kept neat and tidy in the cab area. There's no flappy material hanging down. And that's because this, this simple cover that just pop, poppers into place and you just pull that out of the way. And then the catches, I rather like the SCA roof because it is very much belt and braces, probably as you'd expect of a German manufacturer. So you've got these catches that simply unclip each side and then these second ones that rotate and then hinge out of the way. And once you've done that, all you've got to do is give a good push on the roof and up it goes. Now we've got the roof up, that just leaves the roof bed to get out of the way. Just give it a little push and it goes up on gas struts. While we're looking at the roof, let's get some more light into the vehicle. We've got a window on the off side, a 
fly screen at the front and another fly screen vent on the near side. So now we've got lots of light and fresh air coming into the van, just need to tidy things up at the front and roll up this panel that keeps things all neat while you're driving. That just rolls up and goes at the front of the roof there. And then we can swivel the cab seats. There's just a little red catch to undo at the front. No need to open the doors on either side. Although with the driver's side, because the handbrake's in the middle, you do need on this automatic version to make sure you're in park. But then you would be anyway. So we've got the seats swiveled, the roof up. All there is to do now is extend the step. Can't help feeling that should fill the entrance a bit more and also that it should auto retract when you start the start the engine it's just got an annoying buzzer i'll show you how annoying that is and then let's uh, roll out the awning of course this is a standard feature Well, it was worth the wait for a good look at the inside of this Auto Sleeper Air, wasn't it? It's a smart looking little camper. And being on the Ford rather than the VW, it is just a bit wider inside, that bit squarer at the sides. So it does feel a bit, a bit roomier than a T6. And you've got a three person rear seat without compromising the kitchen. So that's quite a plus. Now, I don't think you'd want three adults on this back seat, but there are isofix points on either side, not for the middle seat, but three children across the back here would be okay. And of course, remember, this is a four berth camper, although perhaps you could add a bunk in the cab or the fifth child might be in a pup tent or a freestanding awning outside. So, potential for family camping? Yes, definitely. And if you're taking the kids, there's no better reassurance than to have a properly type approved crash tested seat. And there's nothing better on the market, in my opinion, than this Rymo Variatech sliding seat system. Now I've got a virtually identical seat in my own VW camper and it is an absolute doddle to use. It simply slides backwards and forwards on the tracking. You've got these height adjustable headrests. It's, it's a great seat and better than many others because you sit at a comfortable height. A lot of campers use the RIB seat, which is nicely shaped, but it is or does tend to be a bit high at the front of the seat. So often your feet are dangling if you're not very tall. I find this seat nicely shaped, nicely supportive and in the evening, last night, I was watching a bit of telly and there's even room to get my feet up. I won't put my feet on the upholstery because YouTube videos, YouTube viewers always tell me off. But, so, great seat system, fully approved, three seat belts, three adjustable headrests, and of course, the sliding system backwards and forwards. Now, here, it's in its rearmost position, so maximum amount of floor space. Great if you've got a dog. And with the cab seat swiveled and the vents open in the roof, it does feel really quite spacious in here. Now you saw how easy it is to swivel the front seats around, but the, even the driver's seat is genuinely useful on site, unlike some campers where the kitchen is too close and you find yourself sitting at an awkward angle. Here, because of this cutaway, there's plenty of room to sit here. And also remember, when you're driving, if you're tall, you'll be able to have full adjustment on the driver's seat without any compromise. Down here, you've got to your gauge for your gas tank and also an isolation switch just switch it off when you're traveling and that shuts off the gas system down here you've got your heater outlet that's from your diesel fired webasto heater that is standard equipment you've got a couple of usbs here 
main socket and the USB over there next to the uh, switch for the step. But perhaps more importantly, because it stands out as being better than a lot of rivals, is the lighting. You've got these nice flexible wand or lollipop lights over each cab seat, two more over the rear bench, which are particularly useful at night time, of course, when that becomes the bed area, and then this long LED strip over the kitchen, as well as down lighters on the front of the kitchen and a couple of little spots over the sliding door side. So lots of light in the vehicle, and with the daylight coming in through the roof on a, on a fine day like today, it does feel very light and airy. Better still, of course, if you've got the sliding door open. Inspector Gadget is going to be happy in this camper because you've got two more USBs here as well as a main socket and a decent bit of slate finish worktop for you to use any appliances that you've got plugged in. You've got a little recess here for, well I've used it for my glasses, head torch, rubbish bags, that sort of thing. Hook for your tea towel or whatever and you've even got further along the roof a catch for opening beer bottles. How about that for thinking? Well. Furniture is all this nice gloss finish. It looks as if it's two-toned, but it's just actually the way the light catches it. And all the catches are these push-to-open positive locking ones. A usual sort of side kitchen arrangement with a combined uh, Dometic hob and sink unit, two burner hob with spark ignition and a sink all in one stainless steel unit. Under here, you've got a slide out cutlery holder, you've got your 47 litre compressor fridge with quite a decent little area of cupboard space above it and then down here is your toilet locker. Now that gives you not just room for a Dometic loo but also for the chemical and toilet paper and that sort of thing as well. But you may have noticed the catch is broken. Now one thing with this van, I quite like these catches, but if you forget when you slide the seat and any of these catches are in the open position, so like that, the seat will catch them and break them. Hmm. Sorry, auto sleepers. Now a few more things to cover before we move on from the kitchen. Of course, you've got a grill as standard, which is Quite a rare thing, or relatively rare thing in a camper like this. Often you've just got the two burner hob. Also got a decent amount of storage. This cupboard here is really deep because it goes right down into that section. So I've got all my plates, pots and pans, cups, that sort of thing in there. That's a good size cupboard. Then back here, you've got this sliding door into your wardrobe. You have got a hanging rail in there, but you also got a false floor that you can put in if you don't want to use that, if you just want to use it for folded clothes. So that gives you the choice. Under the seat, it looks like a drawer, but it isn't. It's just a drop front into there. I've got um, double duvet, two pillows as well in there. So that's quite a good size. But your table, your indoor table, also stores in there, and that is quite difficult to get out. The table and the leg, of course, um, quite difficult to get out if you've got it stuffed full of bedding, as I have at the moment. However, let's get that table out and have a look. So you've got a decent sized locker under here. I've taken my bedding out now so that I can actually get to the table and its leg table leg just slots into this bracket on the front of the seat there and then your table top is actually stored in the floor of that locker so if you've got anything in there at all it's going to be difficult to get it out but there's an easy solution to that because at the moment this prototype has a second table freestanding outdoor table mounted on the back in the boot area and auto sleepers say it's highly likely that they're going to delete that table from the production models, in which case this table, go in the back, problem solved. And it's a decent size, it's pretty firm, and of course if you slide the seat forward, then everybody can reach it. So far we've looked 
through the sliding door, but we haven't looked through the tailgate. Before we do, just note that there's an external barbecue point down under the back bumper. And also, listen to how the tailgate shuts. It doesn't have that nice funk of a Volkswagen, but generally, not much to criticise on the Transit Custom, and it certainly looks the part. Right, now, this is with the seat right back as we filmed inside. So a little bit of boot space. You've got your screens here for the cab, my camera bag, soft bag, laptop bag, but, and also there's access into that locker under the back seat from the back. Um, but not a big area of boot space. And you will notice that these screens for the cab windows do take up quite a lot of space. More to please inspect a gadget with the little pop-up USBs there. And you've also got an external shower hidden away in this cupboard here. Just need to feed the hose out because it's got a bit twisted, I think. But you got the point. It's cold water only. And there we go. if you want more boot space that's quite simple because of the sliding seat system undo those two catches lift up this bar and the seat can be here really here that's quite a good position for having the kids close to the cab when you're traveling and of course a big boot area at the back If you bring it right the way forward, you can get to all the storage in the back. And now with the seat slid right forward, you can get to even more storage as well as all this load space. In here is your charging unit and all your habitation fuses. You've got storage down the bottom underneath the wardrobe. That is your bottom half of the wardrobe. Now it's a shame that that doesn't have a sliding door like the top half of the wardrobe because it would make it much easier to access. But lots of storage when you need it. Of course, where you really want the seat, at least when you're camping, is like this. And anybody that's familiar with this type of camper van will be familiar with seeing a big flat area at the back, the rear section of mattress, which is useful space to keep your bedding and maybe soft bags of extra clothes. And if your bedding's here, it's instantly available when you actually make up the bed. And then at the bottom, you keep all your mucky stuff, wellies, mains lead, levelling wedges, all that sort of stuff, outdoor chairs, barbecue, plenty of room for it all under there. As you can see, access into your wardrobe is still nice and easy, but you can't get into these bottom doors because, well, everything's in the way. So, as I said, it'd be much better if this was another slider here, and then you could usefully get into that area when you weren't using it as a wardrobe. You can, however, get into this cupboard down here, although it does seem as if the door's hinged the wrong way. And of course, internal access into the under seat space. And this is what it looks like inside the camper with that bigger boot area. Still got plenty of floor space, still feels a nice spacious little camper. Still get to your cutlery, still get to your grill just about, and still get to this nice deep cupboard here with a bit of a squeeze, but you can. The only thing is, you can't get to your loo. The other advantage of having the seat in this more forward position is that it's ready to make the bed. And that couldn't be much easier. Just lift the front of the bench, 
flip it over. Now if you've got bedding stored in there, it's now nice and easy to get out from above, but it's probably going to be bedding at the back. You then just lift a lever at the side, fold the backrest down, and now you have a lovely big flat bed. It's 1.99 meters, so six foot six long, 1.32 meters wide at its widest up here where the little side fill-in cushion gives you a bit of extra width over the wheel arch. It goes down to 1.1 meters at the foot here, um, but a good size bed, comfy, flat. Yeah, I slept well in here last night. And you've got blinds rather than curtains on all the side windows and then the screen, silver screens that go around the cab. These blinds do let in a tiny bit of uh, light at the bottom and it's also worth noting while we're looking at windows that these side windows only open a very small amount. They're not sliders, they're just a little hinged section. But back to the bed and it's a really good one. I should perhaps point out too that you can still get to your milk for a morning cuppa. Just lift the end of the bed slightly and the fridge door will open. But maybe you'll leave the settee as a settee, table laid for breakfast and sleep upstairs, perhaps in the summer months. Just pull on this strap, down comes the other bed. That's 1.89 metres by 1.1 metres. And it's a really comfy bed up there because it's a mattress on those Klima Plux plastic springs. So you'll sleep well. So the Transit Custom has really become the key rival to the Transporter 26.1 from Volkswagen in the campervan market. And is it as good? Well, yeah, I think it probably is. And obviously, Volkswagen fans will still want that badge on the front. And it, the VW badge does have a real kudos in the campervan world. But the Ford, it's that little bit bigger on the inside. It does feel a little bit more modern in some ways, perhaps because of this uh, sat nav display i don't know it it, it drives really well um it does feel that tiny bit bigger um which it is um just a tiny bit wider tiny bit longer tiny bit taller um but it drives really well this 170 ps engine gives you more than enough performance um the automatic gearbox the automatic gearbox is smooth um Perhaps not quite as good as the DSG in the Volkswagen, um, but it's good enough. If you're familiar with, say, driving a Ford Cougar or a Focus or something, then all the Ford controls and everything will, will seem very familiar. And you've got a lot of kit on this vehicle. You've got the adaptive cruise control, you've got the blind spot information system, you've got um, lane keeping assist it, it really is a high spec base vehicle and um, you've even got heated cab seats which uh, well if I was testing this camper in the winter or if I was using it as my own uh, everyday transport I'd certainly be very grateful for those yeah it's just a really good all-rounder you'd be quite happy to use this for the school run going to Tesco's and then going away for your holidays going away for weekends whenever the chance allowed. So, what's my final verdict on the Auto Sleeper Air? Well, it looks good, doesn't it? And it drives really well. The spec's impressive too, and as well as everything that I've already covered, it's got a lithium leather, leisure battery and a solar panel on the roof. Of course, the SCA elevating roof is proven, as is that excellent Rymo sliding seat system. So there's plenty to like about this camper van. Downsides, well, that table storage under the seat, that doesn't really work. And 
the access to the loo needs to be improved. In fact, if they could incorporate a few more sliding doors like the wardrobe one at the back end of the vehicle, it would make a lot of the storage just that bit more easily accessible. But all in all, nice little camper, well equipped. Welcome back to the pop-top camper van world to auto sleepers.